You know, the only thing better than a beautiful waifu is a beautiful waifu with an excellent fashion sense. Hello everyone, Silver and of GNA Reviews here, bringing you a spotlight for the only servant that's more down bad for a stallful than you are, Miss Crane. We'll be examining her stats and skills, as well as going over pointers how you utilize her effectively, and overall grade comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 5 star servants. So if you're ready to cheer for your favorite idols, then hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell, so you can catch all of these spotlight videos as they go up, and you can have out the channel. And now, on the Crane stats. Miss Crane has a max HP of 14,971 and a max attack of 9,749, which becomes 8,774 due to her caster class modifier. Her HP is very high even among casters, but she does have the second lowest attack stat in her class. That low attack also carries over to how she fares against other SSR servants, although she does still have a very high HP pool for a 5 star. When it comes to her command cards, Crane has 3 hits on her quick card, 4 hits on her arts, 2 hits on her buster, and 5 hits on her extra card. She has an NP gain rate of 0.39% and a star rate of 10.8%. Crane has both below average star generating due to only having one quick card, and below average NP gain due to her extremely low NP gain rate. Overall, Miss Crane's stat spread is typical for support casters, heavily defensive with very little to no attack. Taking a look at her skills, Crane's first skill is a Lady's Affection for Garments ranked EX. This skill grants invincibility to the whole party except herself for one turn. It also increases the party's star generating for three turns between 50 and 100%, and grants between 5 to 10 crit stars if there is a costume owning ally in the party. Both of these effects depending on level. Her second skill is One Knight Coat rank B. This skill charges her own NP gauge between 50 and 100% depending on level. It also casts Taunt on the other party members for 3 turns, and deals 2,000 damage to herself as a demerit. And finally, her last skill is 1,000 Years of Gratitude rank A. This skill increases one ally's critical star absorption rate for 3 turns between 300 and 500%. It also increases their crit damage for 3 turns between 30 and 50%, both effects depending on level, as well as grants them instant kill immunity for 3 turns, but it does deal 1,000 damage to Crane as a demerit. For her passives, Miss Crane has Territory Creation Atelier rank C+, which increases her arch card effectiveness by 7%, and her star generating by 30%. She also has item construction close rank A, which increases the party's received buff success rate by 10%. Moving on to her deck and Noble Phantasm, Crane has an arts deck with quick arts 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 buster, and an arts Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm is Teni Muho Suru no Inishi Namida no Wakare. It's a support Noble Phantasm that targets the first ally in the leftmost position, increasing their attack between 20 and 40%, depending on level. It also increases their NP damage by 30% for 3 turns, and increases their NP charge between 30 and 50% depending on overcharge. In addition, this Noble Phantasm will move Miss Crane to the back of the party and swap in the next ally. It also cannot be activated unless you have 20 crit stars. Crane's ascension mat requirements are fortunately very simple and don't require any bronze mats. For leveling, she just needs 6 Phoenix Plumes, 6 Lamps, 15 Ancient Gears, and 12 Rainbow Yarn. Phoenix Plumes can be picked up at the Town Hall in Salem, with a 40% drop rate, Lamps have a 22% drop rate at the Eastern Flower Garden in Lost Belt 4, Ancient Gears can be farmed at the Barrel Tower in Shinjuku with a 47% drop rate, and Rainbow Yarn has a 46% drop rate at the Gojo Bridge in Heian Kyo. For skill leveling, Crane will need 9 Lamps, 12 Phoenix Plumes, 11 Mirrors, and 24 Rainbow Yarn. Mirrors are best farmed at the Imperial Palace in Heian Kyo, where they have a 13% drop rate. If you're anything like me, you often find yourself running into the same big problem over and over again. You want to post cool Chen Gong Wombo Combo videos on YouTube to flex, but like any man of culture, you only use waifus and mommies, and sometimes cute boys, in your team comps. What are you to do? Well, that's where Miss Crane comes in. Miss Crane has all the benefits of being a flexible, ally swapping god without the drawback of not being a cute girl. Get yours today, supplies are limited. I wish I could say that last bit was a joke, but in all honesty, Crane is essentially just Chen Gong 2.0 Waifu Edition. Like most supports, her stats are heavily skewered towards HP over attack, but unlike most supports, Crane suffers from both poor star generating and NP gain. Not like it matters though, because Miss Crane has one job and one job only, to use all of her skills and then get the fuck out. So her stats are largely irrelevant, what really matters are her skills and Noble Phantasm. Her first skill, A Lady's Affection for Garments, grants everyone in the party except herself, invincibility, increased star generating, and crit stars if you have a party member with a unique outfit. Naturally, the invincibility is quite strong, and the star generating buff is massive for a 3 turn buff. It can single handedly fuel the crit engines of most teams, since it essentially doubles your star generating. Even the mini star
firebomb effect shouldn't be overlooked because a surprising number of servants do own alternate costumes, including many top tier farmers like Morgan and Spishtar. The more costume owning allies on the team, the more stars the skill will generate. So at most it can generate 20 crit stars, which is an important number to keep in mind since Crane needs 20 crit stars to activate her Noble Phantasm. And on that note, Crane's second skill, One Night Coat, is a straight up 100% NP charge that also casts Taunt on her allies and deals 2k damage to Crane. I feel like the usefulness of this skill is self-evident, it's a 100% NP charge, so Crane can literally NP turn 1 with any CE attached, provided that you have 20 crit stars. This gives Crane the ability to use CEs with star bomb effects like Golden Carp to make her setup even more consistent. The Taunt is also quite strong in very specific setups. Keep in mind that after using her NP, the ally that Crane swaps in will not have the Taunt on them. So this essentially allows Crane to provide protection for them for 3 turns. For example, you can have her taunt two allied tanks and then swap in a glass cannon like Kintoki, protecting Kintoki from any damage for several turns. The self damage is hardly relevant as a demerit because as I said, Crane's job is to just cast her buffs and then get the fuck out, so her HP doesn't matter at all. Crane's third skill, 1000 Years of Gratitude, also comes with a 1000 HP demerit, which again, doesn't matter, and in exchange it gives a massive buff to crit damage and star absorb for an ally, as well as grants them instant death immunity. Instant death immunity almost never comes into play, but the buffs to crit is substantial, and when combined with the star generating from the first skill, it makes Crane into an incredible crit support for any team. For skill priority, obviously level the NP charge first, followed by 1000 Years of Gratitude for the big buff, and then her star bomb last, mostly because it's not as reliable for setting up. You can also take mana loading as a depend skill if you want, but given that Crane's 100% NP charge exists, she doesn't really need it. Without a doubt, the most important part of Miss Crane's kit is her Noble Phantasm. As long as you have 20 crit stars, she can activate it, and it'll increase the leftmost allies attack by up to 40%, and their NP damage by 30%. It'll also charge their NP gauge between 30 and 50%, and then swap Miss Crane out. Crane will move to the last last slot in the party and the servant in slot 4 will come to the front. As you can imagine, positioning is crucial to using Crane successfully. You need to make sure that the servant that you plan on buffing with her is in the leftmost slot, not counting Crane herself. And you need to make sure that your back row is positioned correctly too. This kind of interactive ally swapping makes building teams with Miss Crane very different from any other servant, and in my opinion, a lot of fun. The buffs that Miss Crane can give to an ally are all very powerful. She can turn anyone into a DPS crit machine, provide continuous star generating, and grants a pseudo mana burst with her NP. Unfortunately though, the NP charge that her Noble Phantasm provides is sometimes wasted, since you ideally want to use Crane's NP first with the DPS she's buffing right after. That said though, the buffs that she gives aren't what makes Crane so useful. It's the fact that she swaps herself out. Just like Arash and Chen Gong before her, being able to swap party members in FGO is an invaluable asset and it opens the door to all kinds of crazy team comps. And unlike those two, she doesn't need to kill anyone to swap someone else in, so you can actually make use of Crane's buffs multiple times in a battle. For example, if you give Crane a kaleidoscope and have her NP on turn 1, you can then swap her back to the front on turn 2 with battle suit, use her NP charge, and have her buff your DPS again, essentially giving them a 100% boost to their NP damage, and then swapping in a third support. Crane is capable of all kinds of insane plays and high IQ tactics like that, and even outside of NP buffing shenanigans, she makes for an excellent crit DPS support on any team comp much like Waver. I could never cover all of the things that Crane is capable of doing in one video, so suffice it to say that she is extremely versatile as a support. But this versatility and creativity comes with one major drawback, and that's that Miss Crane requires other good supports to work effectively. Her entire purpose is to buff an ally and then swap in another support who can buff them even more, so she's only as good as the support that replaces her. Which means if you don't already have top tier supports to use with her, her major gimmick is largely irrelevant. Unlike Chengang and Arash, she doesn't really enable all types of free to play teams to farm effectively, which is what makes them so good. Instead, she's the opposite. She enables whale teams to be even better. To utilize her to max effectiveness, you need CEs like K-Scope and servants like Castoria, Vich, and Scotty. And chances are that if you already have Castoria and K-Scope, you don't really need any help farming. To put it in Yu-Gi-Oh terms, Crane is a win more servant. Her job as a support isn't to make mediocre teams good like other supports, it's to make great teams even greater. So if you're free to play and lacking in elite servants, 
Chances are that you won't have the CEs and servants needed to really use Miss Crane as anything more than a one and done crit support. If you're an endgame player who's looking to take your farming teams to the next level for those 90 plus plus nodes though, Miss Crane can be exactly the piece you need. Now none of that is to say that Miss Crane is useless to non endgame players, she just can't be used to her full potential, but there are several supports and farmers that you can pair her with to make her much more effective. Of course the staple loop enablers like Vich, Castoria, and Scotty are going to be ideal for her even if you have to borrow someone else's, but costume owning servants like Spishtar and Mosh can also be great to use since they activate her star bomb, which in turn makes her turn 1 NP even easier. And other major supports like Rainus and even Chen Gong himself make for excellent swap in targets. You can also pair Crane with crit servants like Gil, Kagetora, and Van Gogh to improve their crit efficiency. Crane's bond CE is My Aspiration with You. It increases her NP gain by 15%, and costume only allies NP gain by 20%. Don't use this. Instead, give Crane CEs that either enable her to NP twice, like Kaleidoscope, or CEs that increase increase overcharge level for better buffing, like Demonic Budasattva. And I also recommend CEs that grant stars on entrance, like Golden Carp and Holy Maiden's Teaching. If you don't have one of those, then make sure you get Fist of Hail, which comes out next year. It's a free CE that grants 20 crit stars when the battle starts, so it's ideal for setting up Crane for a turn 1 NP. Miss Crane really shouldn't even be on the field after turn 1, let alone attacking, so I don't really recommend any command codes for her, but if you must, then star generating codes like Priestess of the Silver King can help her both with supporting and activating her Noble Phantasm. Overall, Miss Crane is not a servant that I would recommend to everyone. In fact, if you're a newer player or someone who isn't endgame farming, then I'd say pass on her. But for those of you who do have endgame farming teams and are looking for a good addition to make both farming and challenge quests more flexible, then Crane can absolutely help with her ability to cycle in supports. It's really hard for me to grade Miss Crane because she's just so situational, but alas, I must. So she gets an A for from me, with the caveat that she isn't for everyone and is more of a luxury pickup than a key piece to any team. I wouldn't recommend pulling for her unless you're the type of player who loves spending hours drawing up and testing unique team comps for every battle. But even if you do pick her up as a newer player, rest assured that she is still a very solid buffer and crit support if nothing else. And those are my thoughts on Miss Crane. She's one of the strangest servants I've ever had to spotlight, but hey, that's a good thing. I can absolutely see why people would consider her an S tier game changer and why others think that she's just a useless gimmick servant. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over on our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So, Brony out. Later.